Hello everybody, Cole Sore Stick and Sonai here, and I am using a selfie stick today. So I guess that makes me a proper like vlogger YouTuber, so that's pretty fun. Um, speaking of, I'm gonna be taking you guys on another trip with me, another nature animal related trip. We are going to a place called Mystic Jungle. It's a couple hours away from where I live, and it is a big cat rescue. They take in uh, big cats like tigers, leopards, uh, animals like that. Uh, they get them from confiscated situations, um, people who aren't taking care of them well. They kind of give them a place to live. And I think that they also have a couple of reptiles too, so we'll hopefully get to see those. I know they have probably, I think they have a Burmese python and a boa constrictor and hopefully some other stuff. I know they have a colony of Madagascan hissing cockroaches as well. Um, I don't know exactly what they have. I'll leave links to all their stuff in the description of this video. But uh, I'm really excited because I love big cats and I'm excited to get to learn a little bit more about them. And I'm excited to uh, bring you guys along with me. So without further ado, let's get on the road. So we're on the way right now. In fact, uh, we've been on the way for like a few hours right now. Uh, an hour. An hour. <laughs> um, <clears throat> Uh, I just haven't filmed any because I really just haven't felt like it. I've just been uh, listening to music and playing Plaguing, so um, yeah, it's kind of my fault for that. At the light, turn but, right onto Walker Avenue Southwest, then turn left onto 7th Street Southwest. But we're almost there now. Um, I think in a, just a few minutes we'll get there, so I guess, I guess I'll cut to when we get there. This is a little mat turtle, not perfectly aware of the species, but these are shy species of turtle, uh, but they do get relatively large, especially the females can get over a foot long when they are fully mature. This one's a little boy though, so he's probably gonna get about seven inches when he grows up. Um, and contrary to popular belief, these guys don't make very good pets as they can get super large and they need a special type of lighting and diet. And that's why uh, places such as here will take them because uh, people can't keep them anymore. This is a ball python, uh, which are some of the most popular pet snakes. Um, they're super, super docile and absolutely amazing. Just look at how gorgeous this snake is. Uh, they use these colors to blend into the um, sub-Saharan Africa, the grasslands and forests that they come from. And this one has an absolutely amazing personality. Uh, there's, oh, they're just such incredible animals. Look at that. When they get scared, they will roll into a ball and put their head in the middle. Uh, and that's why predators won't be able to get to them. Even the, oh yeah, that right there to the right of me. This is another wall python, uh, but this is a ghost, was it? Mm, yes, sir. It's a ghost wall python. It's a type of morph, and a morph is basically a genetic mutation that uh, makes them look a little bit different color or pattern-wise. This would be a wild type, so if you went to Western Africa and you found a ball python, it would most likely look like this. Um, and these are bred in captivity to look the special way. It's one of the most interesting things about ball, about ball pythons is because there's literally thousands of different color mutations of them. This is a reticulated python, um, a lavender albina reticulated python, so like a morph I was talking about earlier. And these, this is the longest species of snake in the world. Uh, I am absolutely enamored right now because this is the first time I've ever held a retic. I've held Burmese pythons before, but it's a little bit different. Uh, holding what you know is the longest snake species in the world. And these are absolutely incredible animals. They're super smart. They're some of the most intelligent snakes. And they come from Southeast Asia, uh, meaning that they mostly eat things like monkeys. Uh, they'll eat deer in the wild. I've heard of some large species of pythons even going after crocodiles. But these guys are just some of the most incredible species in the world. They're semi-aquatic, meaning they like to live in and around water and I just am super in awe right now and so excited that I actually get to handle one of these but she's super heavy too she's about 30 pounds and she's holding on to me quite tightly because she wants to get warm and also she probably doesn't want to fall um, contrary to popular belief 
the snake is not strangling me. She's just trying to get a hold on me. Hello there. Hello. How are you today? You can see she has heat pits. Um, I don't like hear her breathing. She uses those to actually find her prey. She uh, she mostly hunts warm-blooded animals, and those heat pits. Oh, excuse me. Her heat pits help her detect the body heat of her prey. This is a yellow anaconda, which is the sec uh, second largest species of anaconda in the world. Um, the just short of the green, which can grow up to 500 pounds. Uh, these are incredibly heavy-bodied snakes from South America, and they're in the boa family. These guys in the wild are going to be eating things like capybaras, which is the largest rodent, caimans, and just about anything else that they could uh, wrap around and uh, as fisk as fisk Expis constrict. Yeah. yeah, there you go. <laughs> there you go. There you go. <laughs> um, yeah, these guys can spend a long time underwater and hide in the reeds with that expert camouflage that they have. Look at that. And they are just some of the most incredible, uh, kind of, most incredible snakes in the world. Uh, this is my first time handling an anaconda, which is super exciting. And she's just being super, super docile. They have a couple hundred needle-like teeth in their mouth that point backwards. And that keeps their prey from escaping and allows them to wrap their coils around them. Minks are little carnivorous mustelids. And they eat uh, just about anything they can find. Semi-aquatic. Look at those teeth. Those are some big teeth. They're voracious carnivores. But they're absolutely adorable. Over here we have Spooky. Spooky is a grand old lady at 19 years old. Hi. Let's see if we can get her out. Aww. Spooky Bear, you want to come out? Come on, Mama. Oh, good. Come on, Mama. Oh, Aww, look at how tiny. Her species, not her, she's old. Her species can jump 10 to 12 feet in the air. And the reason they can do that is because if a bird's flying over the savannah and they see the little black dots on her and the bird flies low, it's like, what is that? Oh no, that's a... Boom. Too late. Mm -hmm. Snack. No. Oh, you hear that? That clink clink? That is why we use the sticks. Because we like these. <laughs> the first two. No. Spooky story is, she lived in a house. She lived with her mother from the time she was this big. She slept in her bed, lived, watched TV, all the nice fun stuff, the comforts that you guys enjoy. Well, her owner decided when her husband passed that she was gonna move to Florida and take over a facility a lot like ours. Well, in Florida, the law states as of 2009, you can own a cat, but you can't possess it without fish and game or USDA license. She gets to the facility, her and the facility owner has a falling out. She has to leave. She asks us if we can step in and get Spooky out for her. Well, we did, and when Vera got there, she's on her way home and the facility owner goes, oh, by the way, Spooky isn't eating her drumstick. Now, do you guys have pets? Mm -hmm. What happens when your elderly pets stop eating the things that they normally eat? What do you check first? Teeth. Her teeth. She asked her, did you check your teeth? The lady said, no. Well, I kind of made us all twitch. So we get her here and we take her to the vet. The vet calls back after running all the tests and goes, we got some good news and got some bad news. Good news is her teeth are fine. Bad news is she's in renal failure. What happens in humans as well as animals when our stress level rises, so does our cortisol level. Well, when that cortisol level reaches a certain point, you are at risk of systemic organ failure. At that time, her kidneys were failing. Mm -hmm. So Vera asked, well, what do we do? He says, put her on the jungle way. What that entail, or what that entailed was bringing her into the house, treating her like the family she was used to being treated. Six weeks go by, we bring her back to the vet. The vet says, 
Can you guess what happened with her blood work? Yep. Perfect. Mm -hmm. So we now tell the owner that we got her cat. She comes and gets her, gets into the same predicament again, oh. <laughs> two years later. First time she was 14, second time she's now 16. She asked if we could get her out again. We told her, sure. But when we get her out, Spooky is coming to Florida and Florida is where she will stay for the rest of her life. He's not starved. You see a drawer? He's not starved. He's not. Listen, he has a story too, y'all. His species, just like Spooky's, not him, he's fat, can jump 10 to 12 feet in the air. And what that's used to is do you see those black tufts? No, it's not there. It's not there. That's not chicken. You see the black tufts on his ears? Uh -huh. Bugs in Africa are mostly black. So when a bird or a magpie or whatever you want to call it is flying over and they see, oh, a grub, floats down. There's a video on Facebook or YouTube. You can search it up called Pop Cat. It is where a caracal jumps clear 12 feet into the air and hits a bird and flies back down. Oh, wow. That's... Now we're going to see now him you're jump. Gonna listen. He's going to jump a whole two feet. <laughs> now, everybody take now, a listen to this. Listen. Oh. You ever try to break one of those wedges at Buffalo Wild Wings? Yeah. It's not easy, is it? He just did that with one side of his mouth. Crunch. That's why we like these. <laughs> <laughs> now, Raw's story is kind of a sad one. Raw's owner had an African serval and a caracal. And she gave us a call and said, hey, can I use hearts flea medicine on my serval we told her absolutely not go to your vet get revolution front line front line anything but hearts Heart don't get cheap. hearts it's not good she didn't listen she called back an hour later she had killed the serval oh. depressed and out of motivation she put raw outside we call it kind of benign neglect. She was heartbroken over the serval. He got the brunt of it. When we got raw, he was skin and bones. And we were told that he had an eating disorder. Yeah. His eating disorder was he wasn't getting fed. Every day <laughs> since he's been here, he has licked that bowl clean. In fact, it, in normal cases where the animals will stop eating, it's because of stress or something's changed. We will monitor it record it and we will keep an eye on it raw's case he stops eating it's straight to the vet now he got a full meal last night he'll get a full meal tonight and in between on tour days he gets four of those drumettes sometimes five and six depending on how busy we are <laughs> and he will still lick his bowl clean in the morning <laughs> or tonight not morning See, he's looking for more. Mm -hmm. He's like, next, next door. <laughs> just a snack. Can, can no. I have some more, please? Here. This is an adolescent cat. Oh. He's a baby. He will not be full grown for another full year. Now, who wants to see how tall this adolescent, I'm going to reiterate that, this adolescent cat can be? Yeah. Oh. yeah let's do it. One good one, Bobby. Now. The more you are interactive with this animal, the right. more he's going to be interactive with you. So uh, give him a big round of applause. Yay! 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 Animal understand human happiness. They know when we're happy, they're like, oh, okay, I did something good. When you're scared, they know, oh, I'm more terrifying. And when you're freaking out, like, oh, I just beat on me, they know, ah, got ya. <laughs> I know it's because I took a behavioralist class from a collective 98 years of experience with big cat uh, researchers and trainers. They all said the same thing. When a cat pees on you more than once, it's no longer marking, it's a game. Because they love that reaction. Now, you may think that what I just did was getting him to do a trick. It's actually not. It's called operant conditioning. And what that does is when we get him to stand up, we can check his entire underbelly for any abrasions. We can check his paws. And we can do all of this without sedating the cat. <coughs> You're not participating. No, he's like, I already went up. What Look else do you want me to do? how tall this cat is. He's a baby. I know. And something else. <laughs> 
You see that big flap of skin yeah. we've got? You say that that is called a gorge before. pouch. I, I can totally see that happen. <laughs> the gorge pouch is there for when they're in the wild and they get, here he goes. Oh, he peed on somebody. <laughs> <laughs> is for when they're in the wild and they get a meal. Now they may eat an entire 50 pounds. That gorge pouch enables him to be able to fit all that food without hurting his stomach. Right. He does not like your hat as much as the lions. Ah, don't you bite. No bites. Can we keep you? Can we keep you? They have four inch canines. Uh -oh. There you go. He's showing him that. Aww. Aww. He's called, what he's doing, doing is called Fleming. And what that is, is that's the Jacobson organ accepting a new scent. I guess on my fingers, oh, they're stinky. They're stinky. They're stinky. I'm going to date a tiger. <laughs> now, who wants to see the kings of, of the savannah, the macho men, the blondes that have an attitude and teeth to back it up, the lion. Oh, I found Dave. <laughs> I wonder where he went. I saw that earlier. I was wondering what it was. What is that? I don't know. It's ribs. Uh, Whoop. Uh, Simba. 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 Oh, my baby boy. Oh. What they're doing is something called breaching. Have any of you watched a documentary with lions where they rub on the pride members and then flop? What they're doing is greeting their fellow pride member and marking them with their scent. Anaconda, that's what they're smelling. Oh, it's the anaconda. Yes, yes, I know, I smell. I smell like a snake. Hey! Now what I'm doing here is I'm creating a barrier. Do not go above this point, please. Do not go above this point, please. I'm not whacking them, I'm not hitting them. I'm just saying, this is not a point you cross. And you know they're respecting that. Robert has worked every day with these guys. They have slept in bed with him. Robert is the alpha of the pride. Simba is his Ow. lieutenant. Zeke Ow. is the vanguard. Now what Zeke does Excalibur. In, in the wild and here, this is their domicile. This is their home. This is their territory. He guards the perimeter. Is that why he was down here? Yeah. He guards the perimeter and makes sure that his pride is safe. Okay. Dead. Oh, look at those teeth. Oh, it's stinky. It's just teeth there. That's why it's stinky. Oh. Hammer man. That's me. Can you tell me why one's mane is bigger than the others? Dominance. Mm. Close. You're close. Uh, testosterone. Yes. Bingo. <laughs> the testosterone in one is bigger than the other. I meaning he's that. the aggressor when it comes to strangers in the pride. When somebody comes up, <laughs> my mother's not here, otherwise he would go ballistic. He would be the first to attack. Simba being the less, I guess you could say assertive or dominant one with the testosterone, would just lay back and go, yeah, I'll help you in a minute. <laughs> and being, being with no mane and no testosterone, I am what they call the weak link. And I'm like, I'm the pride leader going, go, do my bidding so I may not lift a finger. <laughs> oh, that's the job to have. Bingo. <laughs> right? Now. Bless, bless you. you. Now, can you tell me what those little side claws are? Dew claws. Bingo. Do you know what they're for? They're for, um, aren't they for subduing prey? Mm-mm. Ter uh, marking territory? Mm-mm. Oh, something to do with food? Strength, so you're not... I have something to do with food. Holding down prey? Bingo. They don't retract their dew claws. They're all constantly, which is why you see a bunch of scrapes on me and a bunch of claw marks on me, is because those dew claws, they can't control. So when they hook into me, they're there. And what they are is meat hooks, so when they got something on the ground, they can... See, he's trying to clean it now. He's like, ow, my hook. It's dirty. It's very dirty. Hey, do you want this? No. You want it? Not it, if he has to work for it. It's a yummy piece of meat. You just gotta get up. Are you kidding me? He's a lazy lion. <laughs> he can't even lick himself. <laughs> oh, look at Zeke. <laughs>
What's he doing? He's, He's Fleming. Fleming. Oh. Same as the tiger? Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's how they commit scent to the, their memory. Zeke. Zeke. Now, you I know this like is the boring part of the it tour. Is. <laughs> but you have to be very patient with the lions because they work in tandem with whoever they're working with. So if you're active, 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 they're going to be active, active, active because they're bouncing off of your energy. Hey. 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 Smell it. Smell it. Smell it. Smell no, don't smell me again. It's a piece of meat. It's a yummy, delicious piece of meat. All you have to do is make a pretty boy and stand up. No, I not that pretty boy. I believe he just told you no. So I'll lay down. Lay down. <laughs> and as you can see. Him. You know what? I'm going to go feed it to your brother. Do you want it? Oh, and you cool. see how gentle he took it? Mm -hmm. no. With the bigger cats, are easier to keep track of their teeth. Because they're giant little... <laughs> I got to get past you. Bob. Believe it or not, when you want to tell the aggression of a cat, or mainly a lion, watch the tail, or watch the ears. Mm -hmm. The tails will tell you all what the animal's about to do. If their tails are up, they're on guard. They're like, hey, who are you? If their tails are down, they're like, eh, I know you. If they're laying around like this, it's like, it's a normal day in paradise. Yeah. Sequoia, on the other hand, is one of the saddest stories here. Sequoia was 10 years old and lived with a family her entire life. There was a woman, her boyfriend, a kid, and a pit bull. Pit bull bit the kid, DCF got involved, she got the boot. So after 10 years of knowing only one family, she went through such a deep, dark depression, we thought we were going to lose her. She wouldn't groom, she wouldn't eat, she wouldn't come out of her shell nothing so we put her in here with tokala and tokala would come to us and do what he normally does and then he'd run to her and then run back to us like he was telling her it's okay now a few months later she's come out of her shell she eats let me see if i can get her out she eats not only her food she eats the stuff he hides so now she looks like a sausage on toothpicks. <laughs> <laughs> and something else they don't tell you is it should have never been Queen Julian. It should have been Queen Julianne. Hey, don't touch me. <laughs> the females run the troop. And the uh, uh, males are kept around for obvious reasons. <laughs> I would like to give you one ship, but Link's being a butthead. He's not being very nice. Link and Chip came to us with Rico from Oklahoma. Chip is a sweetheart, although he has hormone imbalance, so now we have a transgender lemur here. <laughs> and Link is an absolute butthead. I'm talking about you. Aww. Aww. Oh, he's not too. Nice. He is not very nice. Yeah. Oh, I'm sorry. That's when like they came idea. in, we had our vet come out and check everybody out, and he said, yep. He's got some hormonal or hormone imbalance. And Vera goes, well, what do we tell our guest? He that said, tell him you got a transgender <laughs> lemur. <laughs> okay. The jaguar kills is a puncture through the skull. Nonchalantly, yeah, come on. <laughs> These guys go for right here. They have sensors in their right, teeth that can go. feel the coronary artery keeper, keeper is and feel the leopard. Stop. I don't know if they explained to you the definition of a subspecies. Nope. Um, he is a leopard, but his subspecies is Pantera partis busca. Yeah. If you look back and think back about what West you see on Big Cat it. Diary or on um, National Geographic, the African leopard is a lot lighter in color, like a sandy color. And think about what you can remember about the spots, how small they are. If you look at him, he looks almost like a jaguar, doesn't he? Don't you? I don't. I found a blackjack dealer. <laughs> if you stop fact, yelling at me, I'll give you a piece. How you can tell and identify them in the field is that they each have not just spots; it's a pattern, just like fingerprints. And when he gets up and try to bring him down this way, please. Come on, come here, keep, keep, keep. It's a weed. What is he doing? Really? <laughs> that looked attractive. Come here. 
All right, you look here, Megan. Stand right there so you can see him. He's got actually Hearts and Pac-Man on his butt. So you can see and identify him um, by his each individual spots. <laughs> Pound for pound, you'll get the strongest of all the big cats. That does not mean if you go up against a tiger and beat him. It means his muscle mass for his body size is so intense. He carried three times his body weight straight up a tree. In India, where our Navy plan is from, India is the second most populated nation in the world, slightly most populated by 2025. They are having 54 babies a minute. So these guys in India, a leopard, a tiger a week is killed, of three leopards a day. Uh, they're killed in retaliatory oh, killings young. and poisonings. They get hacked alive, burned to death. Um, these cats okay, are being wiped off the planet. Yeah, that'll work. And nobody I'll knows about it because how? Have you ever even heard of the Indian leopard? Nope. Did you know there's 37 species of wild cats in the world? How can you how can you protect something you don't even know exists? And so we're raising the alarm. And most zoos do not have these. Most sanctuaries don't. They're really difficult to deal with because they are the most highly intelligent. They're like your border collies or your Einsteins. They are the thinkers of the big cat world. And let's put it this way: when they want, when your house cat get, wants to get even with you, what do they do? They poop in your shoe, right? Magnify that a thousand. You're dealing with fangs and claws. All right, we're gonna move down here to his full brother. Yeah, they're, they're fully intact. They have claws and everything the good Lord gave them. <laughs> All right, get up. Are you seeing great? Pardon me? When you say brothers, do you mean biologically? Yes, they are. Amazing, isn't it? Yeah. Yes. Same parents, same litter. He's known as melanistic. It's the opposite of albinoism. Yes. Is it a recessive trait? Yes. But you'll see more, more in India. So you can see, see his spots. spots. Isn't that amazing? Yes. Oh, yeah. A lot of people like about this place is you get so close, but you're safe. Yeah. You do not know that you can actually see this when you see his spots. Yeah. When you look at him in the bigger places, you can see it's a black. And that's how it's meant to be because he's meant to blend into the jungles of, of India. And that's why you see more blacks in India. Whereas they just found their first black leopard in Africa after not having sighting a hundred years. Well, think about Africa. What is it mostly? Savannah Plains. Yeah. So what's the best ca camouflage is the brown color. Brown. Okay, Shere Khan, come here. Shere Khan in Hindi means Tiger King. And what happened was my father named him and got, had gotten Bagheera and Shere Khan mixed up. And then shortly after my father died, I take a lot of poking fun at, at by other people because I know the name. Mm -hmm. But now my thing is the, these are not pets, okay? Let's make that perfectly clear. This is an apex predator. That, so if he so chose, he could take me out. Um, what he's given me is a gift, and one, I tell people, I've been approached by Natural Geographic, Animal Planet, Farcroft TV, they want to film out here. And I've respectfully declined because this is a gift, and I don't want that gift exploited. I don't need my 15 minutes of fame. I don't feel, I don't want to feel famous. This, they gave me a gift, and it's one that I respect. The reason I go in with them is because, okay, say he's choking or something. Say something's happened. I have to get to him quick. Do I have time to dart him? I can go in with this cat and help him. I can transport him without sedation. Sedation's the number one killer of all these exotics. Oh, yeah. I see you. I see you. Now get over there. You're going to let me out, right? No. Give me a second. I'll get a piece of You know, like he's got this favorite trick. If you'll notice how I shut the gate behind me and why we keep them closed during tours. Mm -hmm. is, hey. Thank you. He likes oh, yeah. to block the doorway so I can't open it and leave. <laughs> Good boy. Like, That's nice. I will say it's nice to know you're so well loved. Yes, yes. <laughs> I also have people ask me, are you afraid to die? Well, let me explain something, folks. When you're born, your time clock's ticking. Yep. You don't know how or when, but we're all living here one way. Now, if you live in fear of death, how can you live life? I choose to do this because it's my passion. If something happens, I've made a mistake. And I'll come back and hunt the, haunt the individual that harms these animals because of my foolishness. So there's days I open that door and go, nope, not a good day to die. <laughs> and I'll walk away. Like I said, I have nothing to prove. And I, if I go in and take stupid risk, how have I helped them and how have I helped my family? So it's like today, you go, my son's back going with the lions. It's too brisk. He can feel their energy. And he's like, yeah, no. And you know, people like to go out and see him with the lions, but he chose today because he was watching their, their they're not mad or anything, it's just their energy hell level is too high. And he's working two full grown lions, which, oh, my hat's off to my son. <laughs>
you wanted to pay two dollars. Oh, I'm sorry. I dropped it. I'm that. sorry. Yeah. So because you have that this goal damage is so loud and just so let's not stress. So I did not film an outro, and I would have today outside, but it was very, very, very wet, so, and also rainy, so I'm just going to do one now with some previous clips that I filmed, but I just didn't feel like adding in. Um, basically, uh, if you enjoyed this video, uh, definitely leave a like, comment, subscribe, and turn on post notifications, and also join the Discord, there's going to be a link in the description, and I didn't include a lot of the stories of the animals that you saw in this video, and I actually left out a bunch of animals that they have. So definitely I'm leaving links to all of their places in the description. They're a super great facility that reflect my morals about keeping uh, dangerous animals in captivity. Uh, just definitely go and visit them if you're in the area. I highly recommend it. It's a lot of fun. It's not too long, and you get really up close and personal with a lot of the animals. Uh, and without further ado, Cole Sorstic and Sonai, signing out.